Mahaba, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Doc Is In, where Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's expert physicians and dedicated caregivers converge to explore the dynamic intersection of technology, compassionate care, and cutting-edge research that help deliver the best patient outcomes. Join us as we delve into the transformative advancements shaping the forefront of healthcare, sparking conversations that bridge innovation with patient-centered excellence, from the latest healthcare innovations to new frontiers of surgical procedures and technologies, we'll cover it all. So whether you're a medical professional, science enthusiast, clinician, or just an avid podcast listener looking to expand your horizons, this podcast is for you. My name is Derek Keddington, and I'll be your host for today's episode, brought to you by the Fatima bin Mubarak Center here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Before we dive in, remember hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notification buttons as we are here to make The Doc Is In your number one destination for healthcare podcasts. So, there, so whether you're about to buckle up for a drive, getting ready for a run, or warm up a cup of coffee, join us now as The Doc Is In. Here with me for today's episode is Dr. Nagma Nawaz. Dr. Nawaz is a consultant here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi with a specialty in breast imaging. Dr. Nawaz received her resident radiology residency training yep. in Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, where she also completed a CT and MRI cross-sectional imaging in Ireland and the UK in fellowship. Uh, and Dr. Nawaz also received specialized breast imaging training uh, in the UK. Dr. Nawaz has been in the UAE since 2007 yeah. and has been here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi since 2019. Correct. Where you joined the breast imaging program. Imaging program, yes. So we're excited to have you here. Thank it's always you so fun much. to talk with you during Breast Tumor Board. That's probably the time I actually get to talk with you. Yes. Um, to see you in action as you help inform our team of incredible colleagues on how to take care of our patients. So thanks for coming today. Yeah. Um, today, as we all know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, and I wore my pink tie in honor today. That's lovely. Um, to talk about uh, breast cancer screening. Yes. Um, so if you could start by telling us just why is breast cancer screening so important for... Right. Um, so thank you so much, Derek, for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, a topic which is extremely close to, to my heart and my speciality. So breast ca cancer screening, why is it important? The, uh, the idea is to find a cancer which yet has not become palpable. So uh, by the time a cancer becomes palpable, it's about two centimeters or more in size, depending on the density of the breast. Can you, can you explain for me and our listeners, yeah. what does palpable mean? Palpable means that you can actually feel it. Okay. So by the, by the time the lump becomes uh, feelable for the patient, um, it's, it's gone to two centimeters or more in size. So the idea of a screening uh, is to find it even before that, as okay. early as possible, uh, up to a few millimeters as screening detects cancers as. So the idea is to screen the population. So normal people coming in, getting a test done, like any other screening program, same as breast, um, where you would get a mammogram done and a mammogram will pick up findings which will be too small to be found by the patient or a physician who's examining the patient. So why is it important to find it that small? It's because the earlier you find them, the better the treatment is, the better the options are for treatment, and the better is the prognosis, which means the end result of finding a cancer. So we are trying to find things much earlier so the treatment is better and the patient's survival is better. Oh, it makes complete sense, especially as we, you know, we would still want people to be educated on self-exams yes. and the various things they need to look at for at home. Yes. Um, but getting in for their screening sounds super vital for them to, to be healthy in the long run. So tell us, can you explain there's several different methods of breast cancer screening. You mentioned mammography earlier, yes. um, but what are the uh, options for breast cancer screening? So the two options which we use for screening are uh, screening mammography, which is the most common or the gold standard because it's been studied for many, many, many years now across the world by different um, countries with huge studies, which has been proven that it, it works and it does detect uh, cancer at a very early stage. Um, that's mammography. But we also use MRI breasts for screening uh, for especially high-risk patients. Um, and what do we mean by high-risk patients? So when you go to a breast physician, 
they assess you what is your risk of getting a breast cancer in a lifetime. Um, they have different um, ways of uh, calculating that risk uh, by taking family history, your personal history. They put all of that together and they come up with numbers, which tells them that are you at high risk or you're not at high risk. So if you are at high risk, then they would recommend you to start MRI breasts as well, because uh, the younger you are, the more uh, breast tissue you have, so denser the breast. So it, uh, MR get, helps us to find those little things in the breast, uh, which a mammogram might not be able to find at a younger age. So we first start with both MR and mammo, and we, we might drop MR later on in life as the breasts become more and more um, fatty uh, as we age. Um, it also, uh, if you're at a very high risk uh, of breast cancer, there are certain genes which put you at a very high risk. We would actually do MR and uh, mammograms every year, but we would separate them by six months. So the idea is that the patient doesn't not come back to us for one whole year. So we're trying to scan them six months apart and trying to catch the cancer as soon as we can. That's great. So the breast MR, is that something that's readily available in our community? Yes, uh, it is readily available. It's readily available at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. We have multiple scanners. Um, so uh, getting an appointment is, is not an issue for, for us, uh, both for screening or even for a diagnostic MR breast. Um, we, have, we have a wonderful team here uh, of the, the whole breast team, from surgeons to the medical breast, as, as we know. Uh, which is a new thing which doesn't happen anywhere else in the UAE. We have specialized people like Dr. Fawad Khan, who's trained to be a medical breast specialist. Um, and we have genetic counselor. We, you know, so we have multiple arms in that breast team to catch these patients who may be at higher risk and bring them in to start doing MR breasts uh, uh, at the appropriate time. Awesome. Yeah, we, we just had Dr. Khan on a couple week, a couple, about a week ago, I guess, mm -hmm. to talk about the hereditary risk program. Um, it, was, it was interesting to talk with him, so thank you. Um, one of the things that um, I've also heard um, through my family is n you don't really want to go in to get your mammogram um, for various reasons. They're scared, they're nervous, what if they find something? But what are some of the misconceptions and uh, myths that people have with breast cancer screening? So partly it's psychological that uh, women in general in the population um, put their health at the last of the, the list. So they don't want to deal with that. They would rather deal with everybody else's health in the family than theirs. Um, and this, the second thing is this, this being scared that what they may find and I don't want to know. So to get over that fear that, you know, uh, it's okay, get it done. Most mammograms are going to be reported as normal and you will just come back to us on your regular uh, screening interval. Um, the second myth is um, that it is radiation-induced uh, issues. So mammograms have a very low radiation dose um, associated with mammograms. So it's, it's not like normal x-rays. Um, and we, we tell this to patients all the time that it's like taking um, and transatlantic flight, the radiation, background radiation you get exposed to on a flight is equal to getting a mammogram. Wow. So it's a tiny, tiny dose of radiation. Um, so even if, if there have been studies done that even if you take the uh, accumulative dose over 20 years of getting a mammogram, it is tiny. Um, so it's, it's not, radiation should not be scaring you from getting a mammogram done. Well, that's, that's fascinating. So one of the things I, I heard was we need women to understand that in order to take care of everyone else, they have to be healthy themselves. So exactly. they need to focus on their screening and their health to yes. be able to take care of, of their family. Um, so you mentioned a little bit about um, like when they, about them coming in, but like when should that start? What are the guidelines recommended on starting your screening? So the current guidelines with DOH um, guidelines, which we all uh, follow, uh, are to start the screening mammogram at the age of 40 if you are at average risk of breast cancer, which means you're not at high risk. Okay. So you should start a mammogram at the age of 40. Um, and then af after that, what we follow here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi is what is followed um, in main campus Cleveland Clinic. We do uh, annual mammograms from the age of 40 up till the age of 55. Okay. And after 55, we would drop it to every two years. Awesome. 
Um, lastly, we're we're going to finish wrap up here. Um, we're, we're really grateful for your time. You're um, but is there anything else you'd want to let our audience or listeners know about breast cancer screening? I mean, I w again I would stress the same thing as you already did that we females have to take care of ourselves first because. If we are healthy, then we can take care of the entire family. So you have to put yourself um, in the front, um, at least during this month, you know, think about yourself and get everything checked related to your health. But because as this is the breast month, please do, if you have not had your mammogram this year, please do get your mammogram done and uh, take it from there. Thank you so much. Um, we're, it's fascinating talking with you today. We're so grateful for all the work you do here with our patients, um, also with our caregivers. Um, we couldn't have a better person on our podcast today to talk about this. Um, and Dr. Nawaz and our other colleagues in radiology are always willing to help you with your screening mammogram. Um, and so if you do want to book something here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi um, for this month or even in the future, um, you can visit us at www.clevelandclinicabudhabi.ae. Um, or you can click on the link that's in the podcast um, description below. Um, so thank you for joining us today. I'm just going to add just oh, one yeah. more thing, uh, which um, we need to highlight uh, strongly, is that we have a wonderful breast suite at uh, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, which is all exclusive female. So it's an enclosed area. The mammogram rooms, the ultrasound room is all inside it. So once you enter, you're in a female run area. So from the mammo text to ultrasound text to, of course, the radiologists, we're all females in there. So which is which uh, as being a female, I know it's very important uh, for us females and it makes us feel more relaxed and more uh, at home and taken care of. So we have a wonderful team to take care of you. You just have to come to us. Thank you for bringing that up. Obviously, as a male, I didn't think about that. So thank you for bringing up our incredible team. Um, so we look forward to having to join us on a future episode. Uh, the doc is in. Take care and stay healthy. Thank you very much.